Hello everybody, thanks for stopping by Greg's Beer Reviews today. It's about that time. Let's go take that walk and see what's in the fridge today. Hello everybody, welcome to Greg's Beer Reviews today. Thanks so much for stopping by, I do appreciate it. And guys, I don't know how to pronounce this name of this beer. Julu or Julo, I don't have any idea. J-O-U-L-U-O-O. -O. Uh, this is an American Imperial Porter from these guys at Pojala Brewery. Probably butchered that all to hell. Uh, it's an Estonia beer. Uh, it says available in the winter. Uh, this was sent to me by my beer brother Greg, and he writes, Pronounce that. And I can't, Greg. I, I don't know how to pronounce that. See, he picked this up at his favorite craft beer store. This Estonian brewery has some decent styles and porters. It's an 8 percenter. Uh, over to Untapped. They have it at 40 IBUs, guys. It says, Translation A Christmas Night. Well, we're way away from Christmas here in May. Uh, a silky smooth chocolate, vanilla, oak aged, imperial porter brewed for the winter nights. Uh, well, it's been pretty chilly here. The wind's blowing about 50 miles an hour, and it's about 52 degrees outside for here almost the middle of May. But it's supposed to warm up by the end of the weekend, and hopefully we're done. I'm trying to get the damn plants in the garden, have to bring them in and out. Almost every night, I mean, that's getting to be a big pain in the butt. Uh, hopefully, it's supposed to be in the mid-80s by the weekend, and hopefully we're done with these frost and freeze warnings. It's been a very windy, cold spring. Uh, wind's been blowing 30 to 50 miles an hour, it seems like, since October. And that's the way it is here in Virginia. I mean, last year, the, everything was in the garden already. And now, good thing that I haven't in a... The stuff is in pots and we've been bringing it out and the peppers are turning yellow and the cucumbers and the zucchini is all yellow. I don't even know if they're going to survive or not. I mean, it's been a horrible spring as far as planting goes. But anyway, uh, back to the beer. Uh, aged on cocoa nibs, fresh vanilla, pods, and French oak for a heady chocolate dessert character with a luscious vanilla taste and aroma. So... Sounds pretty tasty to me. So once again, thanks to Greg for picking this up and sending it to me. Uh, this wraps up his beer mail package that he sent to me. Uh, I do have a couple of beers that my, my brother Dennis has uh, brought in to me. And he, he, uh, he goes out west. Uh, he works for a helicopter company with sprays, power lines, and all that kind of stuff. So he brought some beers, a couple of beers, two or three beers to me. One of them I reviewed back in uh, July, I think, and the uh, other two I don't think I've had yet. So we're going to review those next, and uh, uh, I think I've got some beers on the way from a brewery and maybe some other people that uh, sent me beers. So hopefully we're going to continue doing the beer review to here, guys. So uh, That's all we needed. They're saying it's 40 IBUs on this beer. Uh, so uh, we're going to find out what this is all about. Uh, I do want to thank Greg for picking up uh, this beer and sending it to me and, and everybody else that sends me beers. I do appreciate it. Very unusual cap on this one. And let's see what we got here, guys. Out of the bottle into the glass. Very dark coming out of the bottle. And we're going to swirl it around a little bit to agitate anything that's in the bottom. And I think this probably is 11.2 fluid ounces. And it looks a little smaller than a 12. That's before batch C bottle. Uh, I don't see it written, but it may be written in ink somewhere, which I can't see. 
but it is an Oak Age Imperial Porter. Silky smooth, 8%, 11.2%. That's what it looks like in the glass. So, anyway, here's yes, what it is. About a finger of head on that pour. Very dark beer. Good looking beer to the nose we go. Rich roasted malt, hints of coffee. A little bit of chocolate, vanilla going on. Roasted malt. Smells pretty good. Uh, final beer of the evening for me, so let's dive in and see what we got. Cheers, everybody. Cheers, Greg. Thank you, sir. Decent beer. Nice roasted malt taste. Slight hint of some coffee, chocolate, vanilla. I got a film of the vanilla is coming from the oak age. Decent beer, but not outstanding. And like I said, when I come back for the final chug, we'll look and see if we can see any kind of dating or vintage or anything on there. I didn't notice anything on the label. But they may be stamped on there. It's very hard to see. Uh, any kind of black ink that's stamped on a dark brown bottle with a very dark beer in it. So, uh, seems to be very pleasant. So, but it's right out of the fridge. Let's let it warm up. I'm going to go out and sip on it for a little bit and see what we end up with. So, uh, I'll be right back. Alright guys, I'm back home. I've been sitting on it about 30 minutes because the wind's blowing about 50 freaking miles an hour outside and it's about 50 degrees and I am so sick of this weather here. Here we are in almost the middle of May and feels like winter time. I mean, but it's supposed to get warmer by the weekend. Uh, it's going to go from 30s at night, 20s and 30s to to the 80s and almost 90 degrees. That's how it goes in Virginia. You, you go from winter to summer. You, there's no spring. But the wind is around here. I mean, it's been blowing 50 miles an hour since October. Every day. Every freaking day. You just can't get away from it. I mean, it wouldn't be bad a lot of times if the wind wasn't blowing, but it is. I mean, it's non-stop. It's non-freaking-stop. You can't sit outside and enjoy anything. You, you, you can't do anything outside because it's just too windy and cold. So, Hopefully we're going to switch over to summertime by the weekend. <laughs> I'd rather have it at 85 and no wind and warm than 50 and 50 mile an hour winds and 20s and 30s at night. We can't get the garden in. I mean, it's uh, this time last year if the garden was in, they plants were this big and boom, and now half the plants look like they're dying. It's just been so windy and cold, uh, they're not surviving, so, it sucks, it sucks. Another reason why I wanted to move to Florida, but we didn't. Mm, 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 mm. But we're talking about the beer. Let's talk about the beer. Uh, guys, this is a tasty beer, but it's not blowing my hair back or my socks off at all. Uh, for something that's oak aged, uh, Decent beer, but not outstanding. It, it's not blowing my hair back or, or my socks off or anything like that. Uh, decent beer. Final chug. <sighs> to me, guys, uh, I was going to check the date, see if I could see anything stamped on the bottle anywhere. Yeah, it's up on the neck. Uh, looks like it's got 02810201 and then underneath that it's got 028 
and 102021. So it looks like they're giving it a two year shelf life. So probably October 28th of 2019, and they want you to have it by October 28th of 2021. So uh, this beer is five, six, seven, about eight months old in the bottle. And you can't see that when the beer, uh, dark brown bottle with a dark beer in it, uh, black ink on top of that. You can't see, you can't see that with that in there. Uh, you might be able to get a flashlight and try to find that. Homie don't play that game. But anyway, a two year shelf life on an Imperial Double Porter. It hasn't been brewed with any coffee, they're saying. Chocolate, vanilla, oak aged Imperial Porter. Good for the winter nights. It almost feels like winter out there. It really does with the wind blowing. Well, it is. So, a good final beer of the evening for me. But it didn't blow my hair back and my socks off or anything like that. Uh, I think it's a well made beer. But uh, I think that dating, they already changed the color of the ink to a white or blue or something that's more visible than a black ink on a dark brown bottle with a black beer in it. You can't see that very well uh, with the beer in there. And especially if it's been refrigerated and you get it out and there's any kind of condensation. You just can't read that. Uh, but they, did, they didn't they make an attempt. That's better than no attempt at all. So, 90 for me guys. Uh, the last three beers uh, have been 90s. Uh, if they had a, a better dating system on the label or something, might get a better grade. Uh, it was a decent beer. Uh, 90 for me, A minus. Over to Beer Advocate, they say 90. We're in agreement there. And over to Untapped, they have 3.9, which is almost to their A minus category. Uh, the, the very upper end of their B plus beer numbers. So, uh, ah. If you've had this one, and I don't know how to pronounce this, J-O-U-L-U-O-O, -O -O. Uh, Julu, I, I guess that's how I would pronounce it, Julu, uh, from P-O-H-J-A-L-I, don't know how to pronounce any of that crap. <laughs> uh, it's what it is, though. It is what it is. If you've had this from these guys, let me know what you think. Uh, decent beer, but not outstanding to me. Just me, though. Don't base what you're going to buy on what this old man says. If you see it, pick it up. Give it a try. If you like it, buy more. If you don't, don't buy more. Bottom line. Till we meet again, let's go see what's in the fridge.